I'm adding 20 grams of liquid nitrogen to 44 grams of coffee. Oh, Roman! Years ago, a computational chemist named Christopher Hinden had the idea to take specialty coffee, freeze it, grind it, and then prepare it as espresso. And what he and his team of specialty coffee professionals found is pretty astonishing. Okay. So as you just saw, a number of competitors in the recent World Barista Championship in Seoul have been making use of Christopher Hendon's latest research. He found that coffee ground at negative 79 degrees Celsius or lower physically reacted differently to the grinding process. Coffee ground at this temperature resulted in a more narrow and even grind size distribution. This means that there will be lesser fines and boulders, which will lead to a better and more even extraction, giving you more sweetness and flavor clarity. So for today, we're going to put the results of that research to the test. We're going to first calibrate the coffee to be slightly over extracted and have a bit of bitterness in the finish. And then we're going to take coffee that's been frozen to negative 79 degrees Celsius in dry ice for at least three hours. If the resulting grind profile from the frozen coffee is indeed improved and better, we should see the initial bitterness from the over extraction disappear. But while we're carrying out the experiment, we also noticed a few observations. The first one is that after grinding, the coffee was still very cold. This will undoubtedly affect the extraction. So we decided to run an additional test where we allowed the grind to return back to room temperature before we pulled the shot. We also do, did an additional trial where we did a double grind process pioneered by Miki Suzuki. So that means we first ground it at the coarsest setting on the EK43 before grinding it at the calibrated settings. Then we allowed the frozen grinds to return back to room temperature first before pulling the shot. So let's get straight to the experiment and we can, we can discuss the results at the end of the video. Okay, so we've got some of the unfrozen coffee here. We're just going to calibrate the coffee first so that we know what calibration settings to use with the frozen coffee later. So I'm just going to grind, go ahead and grind this. We'll purge some of the coffee first. And grind the rest of the coffee. Okay, so we've calibrated the coffee to grind size 1.6 on the EK43. We're doing an 18 is to 42 gram shot at 95 degrees. So the coffee has a little bit of bitterness just in the finish, but otherwise it's pretty floral and sweet. Um, so if the frozen coffee does in fact create a more even grind profile, we should see that bitterness disappear in the next shot. Okay, so we've got the frozen coffee here. Um, I'm gonna take one out. Wow, it's cold. Okay, and I'm gonna grind this straight away. Back into this container. Okay. So we've just ground the frozen coffee. We're just going to keep it in here, back into this little container, and let it cool, uh, well, not cool, but warm back up to room temperature before we actually pull the shot. So we're just going to set that aside here. 
And then we're gonna take out one more. This time, we'll grind it and pull the shot immediately. Okay, so this time we're gonna do a double grind. So we're gonna grind it at the coarsest setting on the EK43 first, and then we're gonna grind it at 1.6, which is the grind size that we pulled the espresso on just now. So the rationale is that this coffee would grind much more evenly if it's gone through a double grind process. Wow. So as you can see, it's pretty coarse. Okay, we're gonna quickly grind it before it heats up. Gonna grind it really fine now. Okay. So we're gonna measure the extractions now and then we're gonna share the results with you right here. If you wanna read about this experiment in more detail, head on over to compoundcoffee.com slash experiments. We'll see you there. Okay, so the coffee that we used was uh, Ethiopian Puchere. So washed process and it was 10 days off roast when we were carrying out the experiment. Ectron colors are 53 on the whole bean and 67 when it's ground okay so for the control shot i'm sorry in the video i said 42 grams but when we pulled it we decided to do 41 grams because that was the calibration okay we have a 0 0.5 gram tolerance in the shot yield but as you can see um, most of it are within 2 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 grams okay so for the first control shot we did 18 grams is to 41.2 Measured the TDS, it was 9.41% and 22.32% extraction. Um, it was sweet and floral, but there was also distinct bitterness in the finish. Now, when we moved on to the coffee that was frozen for at least three hours in dry ice, and then we pulled it, we ground it, and we pulled it as an espresso immediately, we got 18 grams to 41 grams, and lo and behold, the TDS did go up. Um, it's not a huge number, but it is significant enough. Um, we did multiple shots of this and all of it had a higher extraction percentage. Um, the one that we've shown here is the average. It was an average of about 0.1% higher. Um, it may not seem like much, but when we tasted it, it was floral and sweet and it had a more round body and the bitterness in the finish was reduced. I wouldn't say it was completely gone. I could still detect it in the finish, but it was definitely lesser. Then because we felt that the coffee grinds were very cold, even after grinding, uh, we decided to do another experiment where we let the coffee go return back to room temperature just so that it can extract but I felt like maybe the, the grinds was so cold it was not extracting properly when the hot water hit it because the average temperature is decidedly lower. 
Now this time we did an 18 gram versus a 41.2 gram shot. The TDS surprisingly remained the same, um, but just that 0 0.2 grams of additional yield um, pushed the extraction to higher. Um, it's now 22.56. When we did when we pulled multiple shots, there was a significant difference. The shot did indeed have a higher extraction percentage regardless of um, how many times we pulled it. So we tried about eight to nine shots and it all had the same result. I'm just showing this one here that even though it has the same TDS, the extraction was higher because of the higher yield. The tasting notes was floral, sweet, and this time there was no bitterness in the espresso at all. It's just really surprising. Um, so this is a better way. So, but unfortunately in the competitions, there was no way to allow the grinds to return back to room temperature because it take too much time. But for those people competing in the Brewers Cup, well, you've got something on your hands now, but I mean, you could sift the grinds as well. It probably give the same effect. So you don't really need this. Now for the frozen coffee, uh, Miki Suzuki also did a double grind process. So she ground it coarse first and then she ground it to the calibrated settings. Um, and we did that, but we added an additional step where we let it return back to room temperature as well, just based on the results of the previous few trials. Um, we got an 18 grams to 41.4 gram shot. TDS was somehow lower. So we were not expecting this. We thought that um, based on what she said, it should have increased the extraction. It should have uh, made things better, right? Um, but somehow the TDS was consistently lower and the extraction percentage was also lower. Um, for the tasting notes, it was slightly sour in the start, which leads me to think that maybe um, with this process, we actually have to go um, finer. We can't use the same calibrated grind as the previous few coffees. It could be because the grind profile is different and it's... Um, it's gone a little bit coarser or there's less fines to slow down the shot or something. I don't know. Um, but it had, when we used the calibrated grind, it did consistently provide a lower TDS and extraction and it did feel um, under extracted. So I would say that we have to recalibrate if we're using this process. It has a slightly sour start. But it still retained a lot of the floral and sweet notes. Probably not as sweet as um, the previous shots, but um, at least there was no bitterness in the shot as well. Okay, so those are the results. If you want to read more details about the experiment, please head on over to compoundcoffee.com slash experiment. Um, we'll write up a lot more about there, what we intend to do next. There will be a part two to this experiment. Um, if you want to know more about the equipment that we're using, the calibration, how we're pulling everything, please go on there to read. And if you like this content, please subscribe. And of course, support us by buying some coffee. See you.